big day ahead of us today. It's about 15 mile into Keswick. We've got no idea where we're staying yet, but we thought we'd set off early because there's quite a long trudge up stake pass. So I thought we'd do it while it was a little bit cooler. Tent is bone dry again, both inside and out. It's two days running that have not had any condensation. It's a lovely site. Shower block and everything's really clean. There's somewhere to charge your phone as well if you need to. So, oh, I just need to thank my new Geordie friend um, <laughs> for charging my power bank for me last night in his camper van. I won't shame you for helping us unlump that out. Even the Roman Empire was built on bacon. <laughs> I reckon we've come the wrong way mate, this looks like a dead end to me. Where'd you go from here? Up that bit. How about that? Right. Yeah. No chance. Found a little slice of heaven. If I could handle the cold water, I'd be in there. So this little bit of the valley was our backup plan. We couldn't get in at the campsite last night. Looking at it, I wouldn't have been disappointed. But it's nice at the end of a long walk to be able to get in the shower and just chill out. But you don't quite get this, do Stake Pass is probably the toughest bit of the whole route when it comes to the elevation. The path basically zigzags alongside the gill. Just going to take my time, we've got all day. Look at that for a backdrop. Perfect conditions today for walking. Still cool, slight breeze. I'm glad we're not doing it in yesterday's temperatures. Goodbye Langdales. Thanks for having us. Wow. This just gets better and better. The Lake District just keeps on giving. This path's incredible. Just zigzags up and down the hill. It's like a roller coaster for hikers. Awesome. I think this is called the Langstrath Valley. When we get to the bottom, it should be pretty plain sailing right through the bottom of it. So from lower down, you can't see that zigzag path. 
a very clever bit of craftsmanship from whoever built the pathway. That looks deep. It's crystal clear water though. So other than the signpost at the side of the pub as we were leaving Langdale we've not come across another signpost for the Cumbria Way. We are going the right way <laughs> because our devices and maps are telling us that but it's quite a contrast from the first section that had little discs everywhere. We've done just short of nine miles and it's been beautiful the scenery but it is pretty remote you're not going to get a mr whippy or a chicken nugget happy meal and the best you're going to get is a nice cold stream to filter your water in fact this is the first bit of civilization i've seen there's the first one That's Castle Crag. It's a lovely little walk. Some great views. Looks like we're gonna get a bit of respite from the sunshine. This woodland is lovely. When you can see cat bells, you know you're not far from Derwent water. I've no idea. Well, they come over here for, for our summer, don't they? And he's down. Not sure if I'd like to have a go at that. I imagine the views are epic, but I'm not a big fan of flying. It's like finding that oasis. It's been a tough day today and getting somewhere like this is it's good for morale. Stunning. The blue, I was going to say, they look like blue tit chicks and it's just in three up there.
I'm still smiling. Need to call for a few provisions. So I picked up a meal for tomorrow night. If you show them your national trust card, you get 15% off at Cotswolds. So not a lot, but every little helps. Uh, tonight we're hoping to get pub grub and a pint. Um, proper meal is what we need, I think. And the lady in Cotswolds, she recommends the Royal Oak. So we're going to give that a bash. I think this is full of those electrolytes. <laughs> I think we've earned this today, haven't we, Andy? Cheers, mate. Happy days. What a day. It's been quite a tough one. <laughs> my feet at one point were ready to drop off um, we finally got into a campsite this is Castle Rig Farm cost us 13 quid to pitch up which isn't too bad and we get a bit of a sunset and a view of the mountains so according to my watch we've done 34 0.69 kilometers, which is 21 and a half miles today. And my feet know about it. I'll definitely sleep well tonight. So I thought I was going to be struggling a little bit. Power bank died. Didn't have much left in my phone. And my watch was about dead as well. Um, and the shop was shut, you can pay to have your devices done, but uh, I've just caught them just as they're locking up and they've kindly took all of my devices and they're going to charge them up for me so I can pick them up in the morning. Another biggish day tomorrow, um, the GPX says we're doing 14 miles if we went all the way to Colbeck. Um, original plan was to wild camp up on High Pike. That's the highest part of the route, but thinking about it, we may push through and go to the, the campsite at Colbeck. It's nice to have that a little bit of luxury and a, a shower. Um, this trip's not about wild camping as such, it's, it's about the journey of the Cumbria Way. You just want to <laughs> get it done, uh, enjoy it uh, and be comfortable. Although my feet and my calves are not feeling comfortable at the minute. But maybe a good night's sleep will sort that out. What another lovely morning. So it dropped a little bit colder last night. And for that reason, there's dew on the ground. And there's a little bit of condensation in the tent. Quick wipe with a cloth. And when that sun's out, that'll dry it out. So it's the fourth day so far we've done, I think the last time I looked it was over 70 kilometers anyway. But no blisters, no chafing. That's because I'm in my morning routine. I'm not gonna show you me doing it, but I will explain a bit. So to stop my blisters at the start of the day, I just coat at the bottom of my feet with this Compede a bit like a mini deodorant or lip gloss. Just douse the bottom of my feet with that and it stops any friction from happening. Similar sort of theme for the chafing. So I've got this little stick of body glide. This one's only 10 grams. Like a little stick deodorant again. This goes in all those horrible nooks and crannies. Um, <laughs> you know, where you might get a little bit of chafing. And this has been a lifesaver for me. I think it's a little bit overpriced, but I'd pay double. <laughs> and then for me aches and pains, I'm getting through 
a few ibuprofen. Does the job. Right, we're on the move. Quick stop off at the reception, pick up my electricals, should be fully charged. Right, fully charged up, heading now into Keswick, um, Castle Rig Farm campsite. Recommend it actually, it is a little bit further out of Keswick, a mile or so. But Keswick's one of the tougher places to get somewhere to pitch, from what we've found anyway. We're going to head down, grab a little bit of breakfast and then crack on with the Cumbria Way. We had a short little stop in Keswick for a bit of breakfast, some provisions for lunch later, and I managed to pick up an adapter. So hopefully, if we're camping on a campsite again, at least I can charge my devices in one of the shower toothbrush kind of charging slots. It is, it's all uphill for me though. Calves are burning and I'm dripping with sweat, but you do get the best views from up here. That breeze, awesome very welcome today it's another warm one i'm not sure exactly what the temperature is going to be i've not looked at the forecast all we've done is look at the sky it's all you need to do on days like this This is a nice bit of the trail, not for the faintest of hearts anyway, can't be too bad though because I'm doing it. So this area tends to be called the Northern Fells, you don't tend to see as many people around this bit. I think that's Long Scale Fell and then behind me we've got Blencathra. There's lots of flat spots on these summits if you want to pitch a tent. But today we're just sliding between them along the valley. The path's definitely better on this section. Yesterday it was full of egg and apple sized boulders that constantly give your feet a good hiding basically. And we didn't stop other than just to collect some water, so I didn't sit down all day. And my feet knew about it last night. Not making that mistake again. A proper rest and show my feet a bit of love. That is freezing. It's like shock therapy.
hopefully this filters 99.99% of verrucas and bunions. I'm moving, not much quicker like, but <laughs> certainly feels more comfortable now that my feet have been through the cryogenics or whatever it was, it was bloody cold anyway. Must be something in this cold water therapy stuff. So we've had a bit more time to ourselves. Andy's been 1500 yards in front for most of the time. He is fitter. He's got a bigger stride path than me. Sometimes when you're hiking, you've just got to get into a rhythm. Andy's a bit like drum and bass, whereas me, I'm a kind of more Celine Dion. So most of us fellas find it a struggle to make conversation for a day, <laughs> never mind five. At the end of the day, it doesn't matter how fast you go, just keep putting one foot in front of the other and you will get there. It's big hill time. High pike that way. This slog up to Lingy Hut, there's some big old steps. Got to lift those knees up. Nothing that you've got to get your hands on, on though, so just set your time. Just signed the visitor's book. Now we're off to High Pike. The highest point of the whole trip. It's good to be back on here again. Especially after that slog. I'd sit down, but then if I get up again. was to do a wild camp up here originally um, but we are early it's just gone half past four way too early to be pitching up it doesn't get dark till gone ten o'clock so we're going to push on and head down into Colbeck there's a campsite there we can get washed up have a pint and go out It's all downhill from here. Apart from when you have to go back for the camera. I think that's it for the hills.
finally got pitched up. We managed to get on a Colbeck campsite, £7.50. Not too bad. I even walked past the pub <laughs> to get here. So we're going to grab a pint now then. This is a nice little touch. Although I'm pretty sure we've put more miles in than that. Know how you feel? <laughs> so we've just had two pints, a decent burger, but I'm stiff as a board. <laughs> if anyone said to me now you've got to walk 13, 14 miles, no chance. <laughs> Walking like I've crapped myself. Not sure what's going to happen tomorrow. <laughs> tomorrow is going to be a tough day. Going to have to get the tape out on my feet, ibuprofens, and see how we go.